Thank you, Chairman Durbin and Ranking Member Grant for having me here today to speak about voting rights in America, the country that I love dearly. More importantly, I'm here to talk about the left's soft bigotry of low expectations. Because it's the Democrat Party, not the Republican Party, that thinks so little of black America as the people of color that they make the case that being black in America means we can't obtain a government ID to vote. And that's not only a ridiculous assertion, it's demeaning and it's insulting. When it comes down to it, many of my colleagues on the left like to pretend that we're still living in the 1950s. Well, we're not. I've got some good news for you. It's 2024, and I know what year it is because I've been black for just over 40 years. And I'm also the son of a retired lieutenant colonel who grew up in a segregated South. You see, my parents grew up in a Jim Crow South in the 50s and 60s in New Orleans, Louisiana. Their next generation, my parents had three kids. My sister, brother, and I all went to West Point, all three of us. We all served our country in combat. And I sit before you today as a sitting United States congressman in a district in a suburb of Houston, Texas, that's a white majority district, that President Trump would have won by 25 points and I won by almost 30 points. And that doesn't happen unless we've made some incredible progress in this great nation. Now, my colleagues on the left like to say that common sense voting laws, including requiring a government-issued ID, are racist, and discriminatory, and burdensome. Do you know what my father had back in the 40s and 50s before it was even cool? A government-issued ID. And continuing in his footsteps, I, too, have multiple government-issued IDs. And while that might be shocking to many people in this country, people may ask, how does that happen? It's very simple. It's personal responsibility for all Americans in this country, regardless of what you look like. Sitting with me today is my global entry card, my military ID card, my Texas driver's license, my Texas license to carry, because that's how we roll in Texas, my congressional card, and of course, the good old fashioned American passport. What sorcery is this? What am I, the, the, the black Houdini? How was I able to pull off the impossible and attain not one, not two, not three, but six government issue IDs? Personal responsibility in this country. I fought for this country as an Apache helicopter pilot to protect free and fair elections and having a government issued ID isn't racist, it's American. You need to have an ID to drive a car, to check into the airport, open a bank account. You need an ID for basically everything to be a responsible adult in this country, except for voting, apparently, according to the left. Black America does not need well-meaning liberals putting their arms around us to telling us how we should go to the polls. In fact, if you look at recent headlines and polls, you will find that black men specifically in this country are more fired up than ever to participate in the next presidential election. And I think I know why, and I'm really looking forward to these results. For the record, in, in the 2022 midterms in Georgia, it proved that election integrity and ballot accessibility can be achieved hand in hand. After the 2020 election, Georgia passed a voter election integrity law, and subsequently, the Department of Justice filed a lawsuit against the state of Georgia, alleging that the Georgia law is discriminatory and aims to restrict citizens from voting. President Biden even called this law, called this law and I quote, Jim Crow. 2.0, really? In my humble opinion, referencing Jim Crow for common sense election integrity laws is offensive to those who actually experienced Jim Crow, like my parents and their parents before them. In fact, the law wasn't discriminatory at all because in the 2022 midterms, Georgia voters shattered voter turnout records across the state. And despite that record Breaking turnout in Georgia, the DOJ lawsuit is still pending. I suspect that it's because that record-breaking turnout resulted in a Republican governor being elected in Georgia. But I digress. I'm going to say the choir part out loud, which I tend to do. I have a lot of respect for John Lewis, but the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act is not about protecting voting rights. It's about solidifying Democrat power nationally. It's about federal control over state and local elections, which, by the way, is unconstitutional. It's about diminishing the security of our elections. And voter integrity laws aren't discriminatory. They are required 
for a functioning constitutional republic. I'm going to tell you today, I categorically reject the soft bigotry of low expectations. Black Americans and people of color are proud. We expect more of ourselves. That's what black excellence really means to me. And above all else, we don't need a new solution to a problem that doesn't exist. Let me be clear. Making it to the polls to vote in person with an ID in this country today is a very low bar, extremely low bar. We can do it. White people can do it. Black people can do it. Americans can do it. And we should all want that for free and fair elections. If you want to be on the right side of history, you should reject, reject the Democrats Party's attempt to wind the clock back 70 years because I'm sitting right here in front of you and I'm here to tell you we've come a long way. Let's continue this progress. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, sir, for having me.